Good morning and praise the Lord. We are the Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, located at 6113 North 21st Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19138, serving the community for 120 years. As you know, we can be found on Facebook at Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, as well as YouTube, the purple circle with the letter C in the center. We thank God for this morning that we have here. We'd like to welcome all of our visitors at this time. If you're viewing with us and worshiping with this, us this morning, we thank you for joining us. We know you're going to be blessed by the service. we also like to take this moment and welcome again and congratulate our pastor-elect, Reverend Robert Solomon, as well as his lovely wife, our First Lady, Gwendolyn Solomon. And as we're doing that, I'd like to read a message that will be coming from our pastor-elect, Reverend Robert Solomon, for the congregation to hear. And that message reads as follows. Hello, Corinthian family. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray that all is well with you and that you're experiencing the joy of our salvation. This past year has indeed been a challenge for all of us, but in spite of it all, we're learning to be content in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. Philippians 4.11b. The reason we can embrace this attitude is because God is more than enough. God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. But contentment doesn't mean complacent. That's why I am so excited about the new season that God has prepared for the Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown. Why? Because the same God that provides peace in troubling times is also able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Ephesians 3 and 20. So we don't have to be satisfied with where we are now or about our past achievements. Jehovah Jireh wants to exceed even our greatest expectations for the future. God is inviting our church to participate in God's mission to redeem this world. The end of the pandemic is swiftly approaching. It's time for us to be about our Father's business. Luke 2, 49 and B. Please mark your calendars and plan to participate in these two upcoming events. First, on Friday, July 2nd, 2021, at 1 p.m., a prayer visual will be held on the corner of 21st and Spencer Streets. The prayers will focus on violence reduction, police reform, and any other issues that impact our church, our city, and community. Second, July 11th, 2021 at 10 a.m., we will be the, will be the first post-COVID corporate gathering of worship in our sanctuary. Details about safety protocols will follow. This will also be my first Sunday serving as your senior pastor. Third, annual fun day. There's question marks behind that. I am grateful to God for this opportunity to serve as servant leader of such a great church with such a rich history at such a pivotal time in our history of our nation. Please continue to pray for our church and for me and my family. We will do the same for you and yours. Amazed by God's grace, Robert L. Solomon Jr., senior pastor slash teacher, we proclaim him, warning and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. I labor for this, striving with his strength that works powerfully in me. Colossians 1, 28 and 29. We're so thankful for this message that has come from our pastor-elect. We look forward to seeing him and his family real soon. 
with that, I'd like to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and all the stepfathers. No, all the fathers that stepped up. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will be reading a short scripture from Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In Him your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. A short word of prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the fathers, dear Lord, and the fathers that have stepped up. We do most of all thank you for our Heavenly Father, dear Lord. And we give you all praise, glory, and honor. And dear Lord, I just ask that you just go out among all of us and bless us according to your precious will. And I give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Father's Day to all. And I want us to not only praise the earthly fathers, our earthly fathers, and the earthly fathers that have stepped up, but let us remember our Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, and hallowed be thy name. He is worthy to be praised. I often think, how many fathers would give their only begotten child to save the world. Only one. And he's our heavenly father. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believeth in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you. And I thank him. But most of all I thank his son. Who didn't think it robbery. To lay down his life. For me. For you. And everyone in this world. And all we have to do is thank him. Amen. Praise him. Give him the honor that he is duly Amen. deserving. Oh, hallelujah. We, all have, we have a Savior that will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is always with us. And guess what? Not only does he have his, our back, he goes before us preparing our way. Hallelujah. 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 Let us all praise the Lord this morning.
morning, dear. Good morning. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, thanking you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for another day. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be able to come before your throne of grace. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you please search our hearts right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And whatever, Lord, you find in us that is not pleasing in your sight, we ask you, Lord, to please take it out. Because, Father God, you said in your word that if we regard iniquity in our hearts, you will not hear us when we pray. But, Lord, we want you to hear our prayers. We want you to have mercy upon us, Lord. And, Father God, I pray that you will search our hearts through and through. And anything you find in us that is not right, not pleasing in your sight, we ask you, Lord, to take it out. Please create us a clean and a pure heart, renewing us a right spirit that will not despise and lead us in thy way everlasting in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up those who are sick and afflicted everywhere. Remember those in hospitals and nursing homes and convalescent homes, Father God. Remember those, Lord, who are in operating rooms right now or getting surgery, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We pray, Lord, that you will touch them, God, and direct the doctors and the nurses of how you had them to administer to them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Father God, for those who are spiritually sick, Father God, those who are bound up in drugs and alcohol, Lord, and all other type of addictions, Father God. We pray, Lord, that you will break that chain that Satan had on their lives, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon him, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray, Father God, for homes, Lord, where there is confusion right now, Father God. Oh, God, we ask you to move in those homes, Lord, and bring about your peace, your perfect peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray for our children, Lord, the young men who have gone wayward, Lord, in the city, Lord, killing one another. The, the devil is using them, Lord, to annihilate one another, to commit genocide, Father God. We pray, Lord, that you will place godly men in these young boys' lives, Lord, to lead them, Father God, and in the right direction. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you give them a spirit, a heart, Lord, to listen, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and that they do not lean upon their own understanding, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for the leaders of our nation. We pray for our president, our vice president, that you will place godly and wise counsel around them. Help them make right, wise, and godly decisions for this nation, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for our mayor, our governor, Lord. We also ask you to place right and wise, godly counsel around them. Help them make right, wise, and godly decisions for this city and this state, in the name of Jesus. We pray for our police commissioner, Father God, our commissioner outlaw, Father God. We pray, Lord, that you would just guide her and direct her, Father God, and what you have in law to do in law enforcement, Father Father God, we pray that you place right, wise, and godly counsel around her as well. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, we pray, Father God, for all those, Lord, you're using to serve, Father God, in, in the city, Father God, in the station, in, in the state, Lord, and, 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 and just throughout this country, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, for our incoming pastor, Reverend Solomon and his family, Father God. We pray, Lord, for a fresh and anointing, Father God, upon his life, Father God. We pray, Lord, you guide him and direct him and how you will lead the congregation, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And that you give us a willing heart, a willing spirit, an obedient spirit, Lord, to follow his lead according to your will, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We pray, Father God, for our speaker of the hour, Lord. We pray for a fresh anointing upon him, Lord, to bring forth the word, Lord, that souls will be saved. And Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we ask these, all of the blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. I'm sorry, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. That's the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11 through 32. Then he said, I'm going to be reading from the Messenger Bible. Then he said, there was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. 
there undisciplined and dis dissipated. He wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all his money, there was a bad famine all through that country, and he began to hurt. He signed on with a citizen there who assigned him to his fields to slop the pigs. He was so hungry, he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farm hands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against God. I have sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take me on as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart pounding, he ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a grain-fed heifer and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead and now alive, given up for lost and now found. And they began to have a wonderful time. All this time, his older son was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the houseboys, he asked, what's going on? He told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast, barbecued beef, because he has him home safe and sound. The older brother stalked off in an angry salt and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, look how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you one moment of grief. But have you ever thrown a party for me and my friends? Then his son, then the son of yours, who has thrown away your money on whore, shows up and go out with a feast? His father said, son, you don't understand. You're with me all the time, and everything that is mine is yours. But this is a wonderful time, and we had to celebrate. This brother of yours was dead, and he's alive. He was lost, and he's found. The Lord of God, the word of God be praised. Amen. And now we will hear from our speaker of the hour, Assistant Minister Reverend Raymond Blue from Zion Baptist Church. Um, hear ye the word of the Lord. Son, in the name of the Blessed Holy Spirit, Amen. to your pastor elect, Pastor Solomon, to Deacon Brown, and to all the leadership 
of this great and fine congregation. The Bible has declared that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I would like to thank Sister Betty Bolger for reading the scripture, but I'd like to highlight some points in that text, starting from the 11th verse. And he said, a certain man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the youngest son gathered all together and took his journey into a foreign country. And there wasted his substance with riot living. And when he had spent all there, arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in one. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he, and he sent him into the fields to feed swans. And he would faint, have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, somebody say, how mercy. Have mercy. And when he came to himself, he said, how many higher servant of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will rise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, the father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. May the Lord have a blessing upon the reading. Of his holy word. Let us pray. Father God, we come on this Father's Day thanking you, God, because you are the ultimate Father in our lives. We thank you, God, for what you have already done in our lives. We pray now, God, that you will bless these words, that someone will cry, What must I do to be saved? What must I do to have everlasting life? In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. There's a lily in the valley, and it's bright as a morning star. There's a like to look at that 20th 
20th verse, a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I would talk, would like to talk to you for a few moments on a father's love. Today is Father's Day. And I come to celebrate and to honor all of the fathers today. Today, unlike Mother's Day, you should not have to worry about making reservation <laughs> at, the rest, at your famous restaurant. I come to tell you there's plenty of good room. The florist did not sell all the roses. It was not a big weekend in selling roses like Mother Day. Home Depot are still waiting for you to buy that gift certificate called for your father. Just don't get the credit. Fathers just don't get the credit they deserve. But when the real man stands up, you can't beat a father's love. God, our Heavenly Father, expect us to model him as our Heavenly Father. You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. When we look at our text today, we find two sons. The younger son go to his father with an entitlement spirit. He goes to him because he felt that he was entitled to have part of his father's wealth. In the Jewish culture, culture when you reach the age of 13, they consider you a man. Uh, this young lad felt that he was tired of making up his bed and tired of washing the dishes and doing the chores around the house and taking out the trash. He felt that he was ready to experience life on his own. And when he went to his father, he asked his father for his portion. Now his father did not deny the son. You see, life gives us a lot of challenges. The best lesson in life is through experience. Uh, this father knew his son. And the only way he can teach his son that life is full of problems, he had to grant his wishes. I know when I was a young boy, they taught us that the stove is hot. But if you didn't believe that the stove was hot, just touch it. And through that experience, you recognize that you cannot touch a stove when it's hot. That's life experience. Uh, this young boy goes on to experience the world. He goes and travels to Sin City. There he spent all of his money. You see, the 
only thing we can do is train up a child in the way it should go. Because when it's old, it will not depart from it. But this particular child wanted to have life and life to its fullest. He, he was ready to rock and roll in the spirit of life. But he found out that when he had it, he had a lot of friends. But the moment that he fell, there was no more friends. You see, beloved, everybody is around you when you have it going on. But the moment, the moment you no longer have it, you'll find your friend quickly disappearing. I remember when I was in the world, uh, we got paid on Friday, and Friday I noticed that everybody, all my friends were hanging around me. But on Monday, when I needed $10 to go back to work, nobody was able to help you. So you got to be careful how you handle your life. This young man, who was a Jew, who was forbidden to live around the swans. But yet, he was desperate and he went to this foreign country and, and, and got a job feeding the swans. And not only was he feeding the swans, he was eating the same food that the swans was eating. Now you know a, a, a swan is, is a pig. And if you ever live on a farm, if you ever notice how the pigs behave, they ate the garbage that came from the kitchen. A pig would eat anything. That's the kind of diet they had. And when this young boy, when he recognized that he should not be living like this. You see, oftentimes in life, we take life as his challenge and we do things that we ought not to do. But the good thing, God has given us choices. We make our own choices. When this young boy decided to go back to his father's house, somebody say, thank God for making the choice to go back to his father's house where there was plenty this particular father knew that the son eventually would come back home. This father was waiting for this boy to make the decision to come back home. He was looking for this boy to return and as the boy was coming back home, he rehearsed his little speech for his father. But yet, when the father saw the boy, he gave the boy a kiss on his cheek, on his neck, and he called to put a robe on his boy and, and to put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. That's the type of fatherly love. And not only that, he sent out to have a banquet, to kill the fattest calf. But when the elder son, when he heard of the commotion, he couldn't understand why the daddy was treating this son, who he claimed spent all his money in rioted living and hanging around with prostitutes. But I thank God for 
for Jesus. Because he will allow you to make decisions. But once you make up your mind to follow Jesus, he's able to pick you up. He's able to turn you around. He's able to plant your feet on solid ground. Do I have a witness here today? I'm so glad that we serve a God who sits high and looks low. I'm so glad that we serve a God who has all power in his hand. As we come to celebrate Father's Day, I know you may have problems with your father. Some of you may not be speaking to your fathers today. But today is the right day to celebrate your father because he's still your daddy. Some of you just love your daddy. Some of you need to spend some time with your father. I was talking to a friend of mine the other, just yesterday, and he told me the family has come together to celebrate Father's Day. It is a very important time because they was able to talk about the past. And they told them that they are better people today because they had a good and loving father. Today is Father's Day. And I want to lift up some of your mothers who had to be the mother and the father. This is the time for appreciation. This is the time to let your father know that you love him and you thank him for everything that he has done. Because I thank God for being my father. And sometimes I think about my earthly father. He's no longer with us today. But I wish he was around today to see me now. I didn't do all the things that he asked me to do. But thank God through Jesus Christ who gives me the victory. I'm not the same as I used to be. Uh, there's no perfect father. There's no perfect child. There's no perfect mother. But in the end, they are your parents and they are your kings, and you ought to just enjoy them. But one thing I want you to understand, that through it all, that we have a heavenly father. And he loves us in spite of us. He always takes care of us. We are living through some strange times today. We are living in a pandemic. A lot of people who was with us is no longer here. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. We still here because our Heavenly Father has been taking care of us even through a famine like the virus. He has been providing for us because that's the kind of God we serve. I'm so glad today that the God we serve, he loved us so much that he gave us the best that he had. He gave us Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad of Jesus Christ because Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for Jesus who 
went on to Calvary. I'm reminded of the words when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he asked the father to take this bitter cup from me. But he said, God, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he went on to Calvary. And they tell me they lift him high and they stretch him wide. And they pierced him in the side. And the blood came streaming down. I heard the songwriter say, What can watch us whiter than snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm so glad that he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. What a loving father we have. When we can look up to the hills with cometh our help. Because our help cometh from him. Because on Christ, the solid rock we stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Do you know him? Would you serve him? Would you trust him? He's able to put the family back together again. If you only trust him and believe he, he can do it, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Amen. Is there one today who want to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior? Is there one? This church. Corinthian is on the move. They have a new pastor, a new vision, and they're ready to reach out and help you as you travel along this Christian journey. Is there one? I will trust. Thank you. God, we praise you. God, we lift you up. Because you are worthy to be praised. We thank you as we celebrate earthly fathers. We thank you for you are our Heavenly Father. And we 
we pray that you help us to emulate you in everything that we do. We thank you for your love. And we thank you for what you have done and what you are about to do in our lives. Now, God, as we leave this place, not unto him that is able to keep you and I from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let the truth say, Church